Hi, Stampers. It's Lisa. Welcome to today's Facebook Live. Just a mirror, what, three days from Christmas. I don't know anybody else um, out there is having the same kind of holiday panic that I am, which is weird because we're not having anybody over. We're not really going anywhere. It's just all catching up with me that I thought I had all this excess time that I could get prepped and prepared and be all ready for celebration, which is happening in two weeks. And time has gotten away from me. Um, all the catalogs have gone out, so everybody should have those. And I'm working on my paper shares. So if you are interested in doing a paper share, I have those too. But for now, we're going to work on this card. And this one is an interactive card. Um, the little dial over here turns and various little things pop up in the, the window. Now, this is using the Whiskey Business, which we knew we were going to use. But then I combined it with the Give It a Whirl dies, which we haven't used in a while. And so I thought we would pull those out and play with them because it made a good match. And so I can't wait to show you how we did this. So let me get off my frazzled face and get you down onto my desk and show you what we're working with. So this is the stamp set. We used it on Monday and we used a fun technique on Monday with the internal pop-up. And then we also did embossing. There's two or three coats of embossing on the bottles to give them the glass look. Well, today we're doing the glass look again, but a different way. This time I used window sheets. And so I'm going to show you how I use the window sheets to get that glass look. So you can decide for yourself which one that you like. And then, of course, we've got our choices here in our little windows. So we'll work on that, too. And I'll show you how we can arrange them so that they all match up. So what I'm starting out with is a card base made out of early espresso. And then I have um, our Give It a World dies. And I already cut one. I cut one out of, geez, very vanilla. <laughs> and we're going to cut another one out of the designer series paper. Now, I guess I could have just used the designer series paper, but I felt that it was just more sturdy if I mounted it onto cardstock so that it was cardstock and designer series paper. And then I also used the leftover from that to create an envelope flap. So I used one six by six. And this is one of the paper packs out of the annual catalog. Apologize, I don't know the name right off the top of my head. But it was one that I wasn't real wild about this side. But I thought this was a great masculine pattern that we could use for today's card. We're also going to need to have a wheel. And this is another die out of our set. So I cut one of those. And then we're going to cut a window in this. So there's a window option. There's actually several window options. Get my whole set of dies here. You can make the whole a heart, a circle, a rectangle. You have all these various options that you can use. And then if you use the circle, you can use this decorative thing around it. So you can um, expand on that. If you use you know, any of them, you can add little stars. There's just so many fun things in this. And then these are actual dies that will cut out our little arrows. And I don't know if you caught that, but there's one on the side here of our wheel where it tells the recipient how they spin the wheel. So there's one in there and I used adhesive sheet on the back because I didn't want to try to put glue on an arrow that small. It's really tiny. Um, but if you didn't want to do that at all, there's the option of using these, which are just little stitched arrows. 
And so I could have just put this in the little notch and then run this through the, the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And it would have just given the indentation of the little arrows. So there's several different options. There's a straight one, there's curved ones, there's the double one. Just lots of fun stuff. I love it when there's lots of little pieces and you can do lots of things. It makes it very versatile. And if you've watched me long, you know I'm very into making the most out of our stuff. We spend a lot of money on our supplies and I want to be able to use them for lots of different things so we can use them over and over and over again and have lots of different options. So um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to need to do another one of these out of our designer series paper. So I'm going to need my big um, cut and emboss machine. So I'm going to bring in my full size one. I'm going to raise you up so you can see more. I like this new mount because I can do that. I can move you in close so you can see what I'm working on and we can zoom you out so that you can see the big machine. Okay, so I need this six by six and I need this die. And I'm just going to kind of wedge it into the corner because again, we want to make the most of our designer series paper and this will be sure to leave me enough over there that we'll be able to use that for the flap on our um, envelope. Thank you, Beth, for remembering. Yes, please enter hashtag prize patrol. That is your way of getting into a drawing to win today's card. Um, So it just, it has stitching, so I'm going to push along the edge here to put it out. And then we're going to mount it to this. I'm going to glue these two together. And then we're going to cut out the window. And this will make sure that the two windows line up. So I apologize if this is a little too close to the screen, but we want these two together and liquid will give me that wiggle room so I know that I can wiggle it around and be sure that everything is all lined up and we're perfectly square. And I've got my hole matched up in the middle so we can see all the way through. And now I have a much sturdier front of my card. Then we want to do the window. So I'm going to bring back my plates. That chrome one seemed to have some really bad glare. So let's do this one. And then I need my little window die and we're choosing to use this one. So how I know how to line it up is I'm going to cover the hole. So I don't know if you can see that. But I'm making sure that this die, the little hole here, lines up with the hole in my paper. And then we just run it through. And that was our large cut and emboss machine. And you often see me use our little one. We have a little tiny cut and emboss machine that has a three inch opening instead of the six inch. And this is great for travel, for like just keeping on your desk close at hand so you can grab it when you're working on things. It's got the handle on top. It's just great for lots of different things, but I have a fun surprise that arrived by UPS yesterday to show you. Check this out. How cute is this? 
This is our mini uh, cut and emboss machine in boho blue, which they are telling us is a sneak peek at a new in color that will come out in our annual catalog that's going to go live in May. So we can't get this color in ink and paper and all of that until May, but we can get this cute little cut and emboss machine. Now what they're doing is their special is they're giving away more product than normal. Normally you get $125 worth of product for just $99. But now they're going to give us $175 worth of product for $99. And then you can get this for $30. So for $129, you get this machine, which is valued at $63, plus the $175 worth of stuff. So that's an awesome deal to get the um, mini cut and emboss machine. Now, this is not going to be available for sale unless you're a demo. You can get it as part of your demo kit in January, but you can't purchase it outright. As demos, we were able to do that so we could get one to show you as a you know, example of what you can get by signing up during celebration, which is January 5th through February 28th. So it's an awesome deal. And it's a great way to make some extra side money and pay for little things and travel and all of that. I've made a full time job out of it. Um, but some people just choose to make a part time job out of it. And some people just do it as a hobby. They don't even really sell to others. They just buy for themselves at a discount of 20% off minimum. So if you want more information on that, it's going to be forthcoming. You can always shoot me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you about it and how that all works. Um, you would become part of my team, which we call creative royalty. So that's fun too, right? Being able to claim that you're creative royalty. That's going to be worth the price of admission, right? So you'll notice as we put this here, we're going to line up those holes again, and this is going to spin around. But the question is, how do you know where to stamp on this thing? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into the die as if it just came out of the machine. And then I'm going to use a pencil and I'm just giving it a few little markings showing me where and even three different sections are going to be. Okay, so this is, just pencil marks that I'm going to erase later, but it gives me a great guide that tells me where I want to do my stamping. So then I would come in with my stamps and I'm going to stamp in between the pencil lines. So I've got early espresso for our sentiment. I'm going to use crushed curry for our lemon rind. And then I'm going to use Memento Black to stamp our glass for the whiskey. So I'm trying to get my head in the way, but we basically want to look straight down from the top so you know where you're stamping. That's the benefit of having the clear block is if you, and it's even better if you stand up. If you stand up and look down on it, um, looking through the clear glass is awesome. It tells you just where you're going to stamp. Okay, so now we have this wheel stamped and I can go back in with my eraser and erase my guidelines. And the recipient's never going to know that I use cheaters. All right, so now I just need to color my whiskey glass. 
So I'm going to bring in some Stampin' Blends. I have my <clears throat> Light Cajun Craze, Light Pumpkin Pie, and then a Dark Daffodil Delight, a Light Smoky Slate, and our Color Lifter, which I'm going to use to help blend. On the die set, no, there's not instructions. <laughs> That's why you have me. That's why I'm your Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so that you can talk with me one-on-one -on -one and we can go over how this stamp set works. Because I've already figured out all the hard part. And yes, Gian, the price is a $63 value, but it can be purchased for $30 as an add-on to your $99 kit. And the kit is, like I said, it's the $175, but it's whatever you want. You pick out $175 with a product of your choice. It's not a preset kit. And then adding that on is an option. But not till January. Okay, so we're coloring the glass. That's where we are. So I'm coming in with my Cajun craze, and I'm hitting all the shadow points just very lightly. And then I'm gonna come in with my light pumpkin pie and I'm gonna go over that, just right over the top. But then I'm gonna bring it out a little wider. So I'm blending those two colors together. around the edges. Now the middle is gonna be our lightest part. And so that's why I wanna come in with my yellow and we're gonna do some more blending. And you're gonna to wanna to lay down quite a bit of ink because it, getting it good and wet is how they all bleed together. The point is we want them to bleed. That's how they blend. So don't worry when it comes through on the back side, that's intentional. You want that to happen. That's not a, a goof. So always make sure that you have something underneath that you're not worried about getting ink on. Because I have seen it um, put ink on the grid paper before. Okay, now we want to go about stamping our glass and our decanter. And... I need some very vanilla paper for that, so I'm going to reach for some scraps. These are what I hold my scraps in. They're um, Pendaflex folders, and they're on my recommended products section on my website. There's a link to Amazon where you can get this and a whole bunch of other useful things. Um, I, I store them with my papers in a file cabinet over here so that I keep all my scraps of the same color with the full sheets of that color. So when I go to stamp and I need cardstock, I always check that folder first to see if I have one already cut or if I need to cut into a new piece. Okay. And then I also went ahead and I have already stamp on the window sheet because this takes a while to dry. Um, I use stays on ink. You do not want to use Memento. This is stays on. That's what's going to work on the, acid, the window sheet paper. This is our permanent ink for that. So now that it's sat for a while, it's not going to rub off. But right when you stamp it, you need to leave it alone for an hour or two because it can smear. And then I put adhesive sheet on the back side so that it will glue to the bottle easily. So we really quickly want to come in and finish this up. And I apologize, we are gonna to have to color because I probably should have done it ahead of time but the coloring goes underneath the window sheet. 
So it needs to be finished before we can add the window sheet over the top. So who has the Stampin' Blends? Have you played with them a lot? Do you like them? Do you need more help? They come with a light and a dark of the same color. They come in our Stampin' Up! colors. And we're encouraged to use the colors together. That's why you have a light and a dark, so you can get kind of a shadowed look, kind of an ombre easily without having to think too much, but you can also blend multiple colors together. I have used um, several in this example, <clears throat> and I've also done it with flowers and leaves. Used a couple different colors and blended them together. I'm going to take some playing around to figure out which ones blend together well and which ones don't. But that's why you practice. And these don't have to be colored with the Stampin' Blend. You can use watercoloring or watercolor pencils. You have your choice. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I don't even color them at all. I just stamp them in a, I don't know, an early espresso or a soft suede, anything that's going to match my card, and just leave them Um non-colored and it works especially well if you're doing a monochromatic card a monochromatic card is something done all in the same color like maybe i've made a card and it has a early espresso base and then we use soft suede and crumb cake as layers so that they're all in the brown tones so stamping these glasses and decanter in any one of those browns is going to look like it was intentional and that's how the card's going together. Not that you were being lazy in your coloring, which sometimes I am, <laughs> honestly. I think we all have those moments where it's fun to act like a little kid in color and other times when you're in a hurry and your husband's standing at the door going, why didn't you make the card earlier? We're ready for the party. I'm not the only one that does that, am I? I've gotten better since the kids were not around because now I have more time stamping. And since I do it as a business, I have lots that I've used as examples in my videos and blog posts. And therefore I can usually pick from that. But sometimes there's just, you know, that certain person that you know you have an idea for that you want to customize the card to their likes and tastes. And that's what's super fun about Stampin' Up! is usually there's something for everybody's tastes. We've got this one that's done in whiskey. We have another stamp set that's done in beers that we can turn into root beer, lemonade, wine, any of those things. We've got a motorcycle set coming out in January. I know there's lots of people that are into motorcycles and maybe you want to make a card for them and um, it'll be very, you know, for them. Okay, so Beth says she has some. Why is it not your favorite thing? Are you having problems with them? Is there some way I can help? I tend to really like them. Is there, or is it just that you don't like coloring? Some people just don't like to color. And that's okay. That's why I was saying I was giving you ideas on how to do it without that. 
having trouble peeling the backing off. So I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool because that makes it super easy to pick up the end. Now I just want to lay this over the top and align it so that all the little things match up. So again, this is something looking straight down from the top is usually the best plan. And you'll notice that I put them down before I did the fussy cutting because it's easier for me to align them up when they're bigger pieces and then trim the two of them together and then they absolutely match up on the edges. If I had trimmed these separately, there's the chance that I could have been a little bit off and maybe left a wider border on one than the other. And this way I know they both match. I mean, and fussy cutting again is one of those things that not everybody likes. but it does give some really good effects. And I suppose you could do this with dyes if you wanted to use the beer set. Is that brewed for you? Um, you could add the acetate and then cut it out with the dyes. That would work. But again, you would put the acetate on first and then I cut them together. Okay, so now we're ready to start assembling our card. So I'm going to bring in my card base. Again, that was just a standard card base. Eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. We have our die cut piece that we cut out using our dies and the window we cut out afterwards. We have our wheel. I'm going to attach the wheel to this using our brads, which I did have out because I used them earlier. There we go. So we have these round and square brads. And I just chose to use a black square because I thought it matched our designer series paper. And so I'm going to just fit the brad through that hole. And then I'm going to fit it through this hole. so that the two of them line up. And then I would bend it over and flatten it out. Now our normal intuition is to push down really hard and flatten it. But I want to give you a little tip that maybe you want to use your paper snips or something to just hold a little bit of space there. So then when you push this down, there's a little bit of a gap and that's what's going to allow this to spin easily because it's not going to be too tight. So I just held the snips underneath there and then pressed down on the brad. Then I'm going to come in with my dimensionals and you can use strips if you'd like. You just would need to be very careful that you put your foam strip way up high so it does not hit the wheel up here. Sometimes if I'm not careful, it'll hit the wheel and that'll stop it from spinning. But I'm using dimensionals so that I can hold them off to the side and make sure that they're not touching in any way. So I'm going to support the four corners of my circle. And then I'm going to add some to the bottom.
then this is not going to fit exact. It's got a wider, it's got more border on the sides than it has top and bottom. So you can try to center it if you want, or what I did was offset it on purpose. I went ahead and made the border even top, bottom and side and left room over here for my arrow. But that's personal choice. Again, a lot of demos will put dimensionals under these and it does, it looks great with dimensionals under there. And if you're hand delivering it, I totally recommend it. But I'm gonna be sending this through the mail and in the mail, it's gonna charge me extra postage if I have more than one set of dimensionals. It's just gonna be too thick to go through their machines and they'll want extra postage. And they have enough of my money, thank you very much. So I'm going to go ahead and lay those on with glue. One of the ways you can check to see if it's too thick is to see if it fits through the, um, guide in here. And this worked especially well on our other trimmer, our older trimmer that this was a little bit wider. So this can be a little bit tight, but it's a good guesstimate as to whether or not you're going to have to pay extra postage. But my guideline has always been one layer of dimensionals and I'm good. So I had glue. Yeah. So that's why these are going down flat. And when you're using those dies, I see someone saying they liked seeing how they work. This was just one way that they work. Like I said, there's the heart, there's the circle, there's all those other shapes. And I went straight up. I've seen people put them down. I've seen people put them on the side. I mean, where you put your opening can vary. It doesn't have to be on top. It just has to match with these two layers because there's cardstock and DSP here, just because I wanted extra thickness so that it was good and sturdy because people are going to play with it. Anytime something is interactive, I have a tendency to try to make them a little more sturdy. Okay, so this one already has our sentiment for the outside. I'll reach over into my drawer and grab a very vanilla piece. I usually take an entire pack of my very vanilla and my whisper white and I cut it down into the four inch by five and a quarter so that I have lots of the insides of my cards ready to go. I have a great big trimmer that I use for that. That's also linked on my blog. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clean these off. So I'm using my Stampin' Mist onto one side of my Stampin' Scrub. So I have one side that's wet with our um, solution. And then I have this side where it dries it off. So you'll notice as it washes off the ink, it gets it really sudsy and then that takes it off. So now we have nice clean stamps. And then when you're ready, you can either just pop this in the dishwasher or you can um, wash it in the sink or just run water over it and it'll rinse out all of the leftover ink. I also usually recommend that you stamp off on paper so that you've removed as much of the ink as you can with the paper before going to the stamp and scrub. And then you just have to clean it less often. The dies are part of the nothing's better than bundle. Let's see. So in the back of our catalog, there's all the dies that are pictured individually. And here it is right here. So it's on page 171. They're $39 for the set. 
and then they go with anything, but they were designed to go with the nothing's better than. So back here, there's the index where we can look up all of our stamp sets. And nothing's better than is $22 on page 20. So here is our stamp set that was designed to go with it. So here in the little fine print, it says coordinates with the love you more than dies on page 172. I thought that's what it went with. Oh, it goes with that. So what did the Give It a Whirl go with? See these dies in use on page 30. <laughs> See, I was as confused as you are. I guess it's just because I have used it with that so many times. Hmm. Okay, I don't see it on page 30. Anyway, there are where they are in the back of the catalog under all of our dies. It's this one right here. So I hope that answered your question. It did not retire. Oh, the astronauts. Okay, yeah, that the astronauts retired. Okay. Yeah, these the dies are still here. Anyway, <laughs> just answering that question. I'm going to go ahead and stamp again on the inside. I'm going to show you how they look without being colored. So see, it's not terrible. I mean, I think if we had not colored the outside ones, I don't think anybody would even notice. And then we used being a dad as whiskey business. So we can say your top shelf, cheers to you, straight up you're the best, or sending an old-fashioned birthday card. I think I'm going to use one of these other ones just so it can be used for any occasion because maybe we want to use this for Father's Day or something else. <laughs> and if we decided we were going to use it for a birthday card, you can add happy birthday underneath of it um, last minute before you deliver it to somebody. This You could also put congratulations or happy Father's Day. You could put anything underneath of it later. So it's the card is finished, but you can make it more specific, you know, right before you decide to give it to somebody if you'd like. So there's our inside and here's our outside with our arrow and spinning. This was my first one. Here's our second one because there was that arrow. This is where I showed you that I used the little piece that was cut out of here. I put some adhesive sheet on the back and then I have my arrow with my sticky already on it. So that's definitely gonna need a little help. So I'm gonna bring in the take your pick tool peel that backing off and now this is sticky. And I can figure out where that goes and place it right down. So there we go. There is today's whiskey business card with our window sheet glass look. Again, we were comparing that to Monday when we did our em clear embossing instead of the window sheet. I like them both. It's just personal preference. And you don't even have to add the glossy to it at all. So 
So, who's ready to spin for Prize Patrol? Um, thank you for those who remembered to put in hashtag Prize Patrol because that's how you get entered into today's drawing. And the winner will get today's card in the mail sent to them. I have the computer over here collecting everybody's name. So if you have entered hashtag prize patrol, all together, one word, no spaces, then that's going to put your name in there. So when we spin it, you have the chance of winning. Has everybody got it input? Okay, so. Our winner is going to go to my blog or my website and at queenbeecreations.net, you're going to put in the address bar slash prize patrol after the end. And then that's going to um, give you the claim form where you can give me your address so I know where to mail it. So Lori is our winner. Congratulations. I probably have your address, but if you could do me the favor and go to that um, queenbeecreations.net slash prize patrol. It helps me keep track so I know that I've mailed them off. I put little check marks on there. I'm, thankfully, I'm all caught up. So everybody who has won so far, um, you should have received your winnings already. And I do know what I'm doing on Monday. <laughs> Surprise! Um, on Monday, we're going to be doing hinge stamping. So this is using our stamp apparatus. I've decided we're not using the stamp apparatus quite enough. And so I'm going to be using this card here because we're playing around with the biggest wish stamp set. That's what we're focusing on for next week. So this is a great bold stamp set that allows us to do quick and easy cards because they're big sentiments and can be the focal point, then you can do quick cards. And this actually took a little more time because of the colors, because I wanted a rainbow effect, but you could easily do this with the same color or just start out with the color and then not re-ink it and it would get just lighter and lighter as you move your way down the hinge. So we will play around with that on Monday. So have a very Merry Christmas and um, enjoy your family and friends and the day off and stay warm and come back and see me on Monday. Thanks a lot. Bye.